What's up, everybody? This is Tom from Deep Video Live here on location at the historic Halton Theater, my absolute favorite venue in the DFW Metroplex. And I'm joined now by a staple in the local scene. Uh, tell us about yourself, Case, please. Introduce yourself and sell yourself a little bit. So I'm Case. Uh, I'm the vocalist for Ultimatum. I, uh, I also own Vulgar PR, getting that up and running. And then I also run security here at the Halton Theater. Uh, just kind of stay interconnected with the scene, man. Yeah, that's the perfect segue into that. Please give us your perspective on the local scene over the last few years, like pre and post COVID, because it's been so awesome to watch it. I, I moved to Texas right before the pandemic hit. Yeah. I got about a year of seeing what everything was like, and then everything got shut down, but people were people were still doing shit on the down low and keeping it going. And now it's back strong a few years later. So tell us your perspective on that. Well, I actually had no idea that there was even a scene for any of this uh, until about well, beginning of 2021, halfway through 2021, uh, I will say that was kind of when it started to ramp up uh, this entire, just the scene for local music, just in a whole, but metal music extremely with like the hardcore bands, slam bands, deathcore, all that shit coming through. It's It's been crazy to watch, you know, you got bands like Instinct, Bloodletting, um, no, uh, your band? My, yeah, my band. Uh, no Way Out's making a come up. Uh, Cold Case, they just dropped a badass EP today. Yeah, we heard about that. It's really cool. Dude, it's fucking, the shit's insane coming down. Uh, then you got, you know, bands from like Oklahoma, uh, Peeling Flesh, they're really like busting through the ceiling, making Slam like a really big deal, which is making all the hardcore kids come back, you know? Yeah, Peeling Flesh fucking rules. Dude, they're fucking amazing. So, I mean, the scene, I keep hearing people they're like the scene's dead the scene's dead nah dude you just you're not you're going to the wrong fucking shows quit going to emo night and come to like these local shows and you'll see what the fuck's up like these motherfuckers throw down I, we had somebody fucking kick a fucking lamp out from the ceiling doing spin kicks out in the second stage it was fucking insane tonight no this was i think last week actually it was during fucking ballista was planned I believe, and they fucking busted this bitch off the ceiling. It was fucking sick. I swear to God, we, we have a lot of fun here. You see a man in a bulletproof vest working security in our previous interview with Keith, but uh, talking about busting uh, glass off of ceilings and shit. It's, it gets rowdy here, but it, I don't, we don't want to paint that image because you know, we all know how it gets. Metal gets rowdy, but we're all having well, it's fun. All, it's, all, it's all in good fun. I mean, nobody gets hurt. Nobody fucking, you know, ain't nobody leaving bloody or nothing like that. It's just everybody just, you know, throwing down, having a good time. Yeah, well, uh, can you give us some uh, good stories that you uh, that you have from your time in the scene? Maybe some shit that stands out. Some's like, whoa, that was fucking insane, or whoa, that was that was a close one. Mm, I think, man, there's so much crazy shit. Just that's the general consensus. There's been so much, and it's hard to think of. But just yeah. I mean, fucking, uh, I mean, you, you look at fucking Third String, Monster Mosh, Chaos of Carnage, that shit coming through, those always are a good time, you know, it's it's all your it's all your favorite locals on bands with these nationals, and everybody's there to throw down, everybody, they're all there to throw down for every fucking band from the very beginning to the very end. Um, I mean, the craziest thing that I've seen was shit just last weekend with, like I said, uh, what was it? Ballista was playing. Um, fuck, I can't remember all the bands around that thing. But it was just a straight hardcore show, and I've never seen a mosh pit make an L formation. Ooh, okay. And it was everybody in the room making an L formation, just <laughs> just two stepping away, man. It's it's just been crazy. Man. Yeah, see, that's a common theme. I keep trying to squeeze like juicy stories out of people, like, oh, this guy this guy got the shit kicked out of him, or or yeah, like some they, crazy shit. Happened. I wouldn't even run in security one night, but they fucking ripped the uh, electrical wiring off the pole and out the ceiling. And, See, that's what I'm talking about. And they had to, uh, that was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I believe, and they had to kick the dude out. It was crazy. It, they just He just started climbing the pole, and then the entire electric cord just started ripping out of the ceiling. And it's, see, that's the fun shit. Like, I, I'm not condoning that behavior, obviously. We yeah, can't, don't, we don't, can't. Don't destroy the venues. Yeah, we can't be doing that, but at the same time, like, that's kind of what builds the local legends. But the thing is, I keep asking people about that shit, and the co the general consensus is that, like, no, everybody's just having a good time. Like, somebody gets a little too drunk. Or, yeah, that happens. I have, sometimes somebody gets a little too drunk. But like I said, it, there's stories, there's so many stories, but to 
to think of just one to tell you, you just got to come out to a local show here in DFW and experience it for yourself. Yeah, well, it's the turnout tonight has been absolutely amazing. It's, I mean, it's we got over a thousand people here tonight. Yeah, we do. Uh, we do from what I from what I understand, and it's great to see it bustling. And there's it really speaks to what you're talking about the scene coming back because this isn't really my particular scene. I'm I'm more into the brutal shit, and uh, and you're on the deathcore side, and then we have all these like melodic metalcore whatever yeah. the hell bands here tonight. But they're doing great, and everybody's having a good time. So it's like there's the lines are really being blurred, and I think that's a great thing. It's just. I Everybody's supporting everybody. I mean, like, it's not just metal supporting. Or it's not like, you know, death metal. You, like you said, you have metalcore, uh, you have rock bands, you have more melodic, hardcore. But everybody coming together and supporting each other, I think that's what really matters. Absolutely. Uh, any plans for uh, Ultimatum coming up in the future? I've, I've caught you guys live a couple of times, and it's always a, it's always a fun time. So what's in, the, what's in the future for Ultimatum? Uh, right now, we are recording music. We are kind of putting, I mean, we're playing shows here and there, we're, but we're putting that kind of on the back burner. Uh, we, got, we got a bunch of heavy, heavy shit that we're recording right now. Can't wait, man. The, re the releases are going to be crazy. Let me actually, let me do something here. Okay, we're jumping in. Oh, is this? Yeah. Um, this just in, this is the best fucking shirt in the metal scene. This is the best shirt in the fucking metal scene. Man, Bro, look at that. The That's the best shit fucking ever. shirt. This is the rarest shit ever. It's Why? a song that never got released. See, I was so if you, it. Dude, and it was such a great fucking song, but it never got released. So if you own this Bludgeon Harlot t-shirt, it says, the day you came, I fucking died. If you own that motherfucker, you bring it to me in a year, and I'll give you a full free merch package. Bro, why don't you just sign my shit now, then? Where's I need a Sharpie. I need to get one, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, Case, I don't know what he uh, was talking to you about or whatever. Uh, I have a question for you. What's up? Where do you want to be when it comes to this scene that you're fucking around in in three years? In three years? Three years, yeah. I'd like to be a pretty big promoter in the scene, pretty well known as far as promoting goes. Uh, as somebody that gave the up-and-comers a shot, mm. whereas, you know, sometimes... You know, you got big, big promoters. It's hard to get on those national slots. You either end up paying thousands of dollars to get on there and you play to nobody, or you have a chance to play to nobody and you just, you're now out a thousand dollars. I'd like to be able to get those nationals coming in and I'd like to put locals on every single one of those shows. Fuck yeah, dude, okay. B side to that. How can people like us at Deep Video Live, Tom, myself, all these other people who've been fucking around with us the last few years in the scene here, how can we help you get there? I mean, just support the fucking scene, bro. Support your locals. I don't, I, look, man, I, I think everybody should be given a shot. And also, you got to put in the work mm. to get there anyway. So, I mean, don't go seeking handouts, but definitely you support others. If you support others, they'll support you. If you help others, they'll help you. If you scratch my back, you, I'll scratch yours. You know what I mean? Bro, and I guess the only thing I got left, the only thing I need from you is your medius quote of the day. Medius? The medius quote of the my day. My medius quote of the day. <laughs> it's dookie time. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it for Deep Video Live. Thank you to Case Wisdom with Ultimatum. Uh, thanks to Tom for handling the first part of this uh, fucking interview. Uh, and let that be your mantra from now on. That was it right there. It's what time? I believe it's Dookie time. Yeah, yeah, that's it.